When I first saw this craft, I was immediately floored with the level of creativity and effectiveness I was seeing. It was such a mysterious phenomenon, but there was one thing for sure. What TJ Dillashaw was doing with his footwork was at a different level. When you become the champion, all eyes are on you. People want to know how you did it. What was the craft you used that got you the victory? And when TJ Dillashaw fought the once considered bantamweight great Henan Barrow, he dominated the seemingly unbeatable king in stylish fashion. Now keep in mind at the time, Brow was touted as a pound for pound great with no defeats in his UFC run and it seemed like no one could stop him. But TJ did, and he didn't just do it once, he did it twice to Brow. And who could forget he ended the rematch in the infamous 27 hit combo. The way TJ moved, his method of attack and smooth execution as though he were gracefully gliding on ice made everyone realize there was an alternative and interesting way to get the job done. So if you were like me, you were probably asking yourself, how does it work? How does he manage to seemingly take command of the opponent's weak angles? I have those answers for you and more. In this video, we'll be taking a look at TJ Dillashaw's top 5 signature tactics and the footwork used in his fighting style to explain why it's so effective, the applications and the core principles of how it works. These will be the techniques he uses the most and finds the most success with, so if you've ever been curious about his footwork and the critical details in understanding his craft, stay tuned because I have a lot of valuable things to share with you that you're going to want to know. This first tactic is a technique that uses a switch step. Now the switch step is usually used to chamber your lead foot behind you so you could effectively change your stance. This allows you to load up your hips so that you could throw hard kicks from the other side. This is also known as a switch kick. Now TJ builds on this technique by adding a cross with the switch step and as a result his team refers to this technique as a switch cross. When TJ throws this he'll do a switch step and then he'll take his head off slightly from the center line to avoid counters and he throws his cross. This technique is tricky because you don't quite know what TJ is going to throw and this is what makes the switch cross so effective. In principle it's important to have various versions of your technique so that the opponent can not predict and adapt to your attack patterns. One of the common ways TJ uses the switch cross is to throw the switch cross then following up with a check hook. The pivot along the check hook works well if you're trying to bypass landing your shots like a straight kick because when you're pivoting the body moves as though it's opening a door to bypass a linear strike. When the opponent gets used to your pattern of engaging in the punching range, you can actually change your rhythm by switching into the kicking range. When TJ gets the opponent thinking he's going to engage with the punching range, he can counter them by using the switch cross and going into a head kick instead. This is effective because while opponents are attempting to engage in the punching range, TJ can kick them in the head safely from a kicking range where they can't reach him. Lastly, he'll use a switch cross to set up takedowns. While opponents get used to the rhythm of preparing to defend strikes, TJ can switch entirely into using the switch cross to set up his takedowns. More commonly, he'll show the switch step, he'll shift up, and then use the hook to trip them into a takedown. This is the deceptive nature of the switch cross. You just don't know if TJ is going to engage in the punching range, the kicking range, or go for takedowns. TJ actually teaches this technique specifically, so I'm actually going to link his video in the description if you want to check out his channel if you want to know more about the details. This is a personal favorite of mine to use, but this tactic is the shifting cross. The main use behind this technique is that it exploits attacking the opponent at angles where they're going to have a hard time dealing with you. One of the common methods of attacking an opponent in an advantageous position is by moving to their weak angles where they're going to have a hard time adjusting to you. But the problem is that the opponent won't simply give up that angle. You have to earn those angles very deceitfully. One of the methods of taking an angle is by occupying the opponent with a strike. This will sometimes force them to respond by grounding themselves, typically by shelling up or blocking. TJ's shifting cross manages to do all of this by distracting the opponent while simultaneously taking over their weak angles. Let's break it down. Watch as TJ is going to take a step out of his lead foot. This allows him to align his movement to move even further outside the opponent's weak angle. Then he's going to throw his cross, but pay attention to his rear foot. It's actually going to slide up and align itself with the right foot. 
and as soon as the alignment takes place, the right foot is actually going to bump out even further laterally into Burrell's weak angle. And by moving even deeper into Burrell's weak angles, now it's going to make it even harder for Burrell to attack because you're going to notice that TJ is so far outside of Burrell's effective attack angles in the red shaded area. Now TJ can actually attack him without really having to worry about getting countered back. Now he's going to throw his power shot, but you're going to also notice that in order for Burrell to attack back, he has to turn away and readjust his angles to align himself with TJ. The cross plays an important role in disguising the footwork. His opponent is so fixated on defense, he doesn't realize the footwork he used to advance onto his weak angles. Also pay attention to how much distance TJ is actually able to cover as he steps out and bumps out even further. This lets him move so deep into the opponent's weak angle that his opponent can't effectively strike back since TJ is outside the effective striking zone. This was a very effective tactic used to command Burrell's weak angles. He used this on various opponents as well, but keep in mind that this technique works best if you can build the right rhythm. You need to ensure that you can get the opponent to be stationary by feeding them shots that force them to stay still. And in Burrell's case, for this specific sequence, he was fed a shot that made him lift his leg up, and this forces him to stay still to surrender his angles. But if you don't manage to keep the opponent still, they can adjust their angles and counter back, like what we saw with a Sun Sao. Do keep in mind that the angles you create will not have much meaning if the opponent is not there in order for you to utilize them. Another alternative application of using the shifting cross is that it can be used to counter certain kicks. For example, when on Sun Sao looked to kick TJ on the inside of his leg, he timed the shifting cross to catch him off guard. So here TJ is going to throw his cross, but then Sun Sao throws his inside leg kick. But because the shifting cross moves you in a lateral direction, you're going to see that his leg's going to move in that direction already. Then from here, he lands the counter and moves out at an angle to attack from a new spot. And this could apply to other kicks too. Here TJ is going to throw his cross, timing on Sun Sao's kick. Now Sun Sao's kick is going to be moving him in a lateral direction, but TJ is already going to be moving in a lateral direction, so that mitigates a lot of the force. Then as he shifts up, you're going to notice that the trailing leg is actually going to sweep out a Sun Sao's standing leg. And from here he can attack from the new angle. The next tactic is one he throws a lot, but he tends to have a smaller rate of success with compared to his other tactics. Here TJ is going to use a dip step, then fire his uppercut. The way this works is that as TJ dips, it actually helps him evade the initial shot, but it also allows him to sneak his lead foot closer into range. Now this is important because the uppercut is a close range technique, and you need to move a little bit closer in order to use a proper range to land it. An important detail is that TJ will often use the lead hand to fake a single leg attempt. Now the single leg attempt can sometimes force opponents to change their attention to fight the takedowns but it also opens them up to an uppercut. Okay so let's look at an example here. So TJ is going to dip low but notice that as he dips low he's going to sneak his foot a little closer into range where that blue box is. Then he's going to use his lead hand to kind of fake a single leg. Now Lineker he's going to take his lead foot and move it back. But as he does that, he actually opens up an opportunity for TJ to land that uppercut. And here, he fires the uppercut. Then you're going to see here pretty soon, he lands that uppercut. Then TJ manages to escape the range. TJ uses this quite often and has some pretty mixed results. Against Lineker specifically, he landed this pretty consistently. But on the most part, this requires being very accurate since you're moving up the vertical axis of the opponent's position. And it's very easy to evade those kind of shots because you can simply just pull the head back or just move the head laterally. This tactic follows the same idea as the footwork used in the shifting cross. The main use of the lateral shift is to flash your attack at the opponent to occupy their senses while simultaneously moving at a lateral angle. Now let's break it down. So TJ is going to throw his rear hand to distract them, but he's also going to simultaneously step out with the lead foot at the same time. Now pay attention to his rear foot, it's actually going to slide up into this position here, and then you're going to notice that he's now into a different stance. He's in his southpaw stance, where he can immediately attack again from a new position.
When TJ takes control of the new angle, he can typically land strikes while the opponent is forced to reset their position. And one last thing to keep in mind is that this technique can be thrown using a jab or a cross to initially bait the opponent. So you're going to be using the jab or the cross to kind of disguise the lead foot step. Throwing some kind of strike to fake the opponent is very important because you could bait them into grounding themselves to respond. A lot of the time you'll see the opponent put their guard up or attempt to counter and this commits them into a static position. This makes them less likely to adjust to TJ's new position since their senses are occupied by whatever TJ fainted them with. This gives you a split moment to move around to attack at a different angle where the opponent will have a hard time responding. Just to emphasize a few things here, the shot you throw is usually meant to set up the footwork. I tend to drill this to where I make sure the footwork and the distraction happen simultaneously. This is just an example from sparring where you could just use the jab to bait out something like a kick. And then from there you can use a lateral switch to hit a new angle away from the attack and this opens up an opportunity for me to punish from another side. From sparring, you'll see that I flash my shot, I hit a lateral shift, and I can usually attack from a new angle outside from the opponent's weak side. And here's a failed attempt too. I thought this would be important to include to highlight why it may not work. So if you can't really build a rhythm of getting the opponent to stay in position, something like this can happen where they move away from the angles that you create. This is very similar to the shifting cross, but there's one main difference between the two. With the shifting cross, your lead foot is actually grounded to help with the transfer of the power when you're throwing the cross. But with the lateral shift version, TJ actually throws the cross and steps out with the lead foot at the same time. And since the lead foot isn't grounded, you sacrifice power but you actually gain some mobility. Since you're not committing on the cross, this actually lets you transition to other angles more swiftly where you can work offense from another angle instead. To sum it up, the shifting cross, it lets you throw with power, but the transition to a new angle is not as seamless. And with the lateral shift, it does lack power, but it allows more fluid transitions to another angle since you're not really committing. And do keep in mind that the less you commit on something, the sooner you can act afterwards. This last tactic is a head kick setup that TJ tends to land the most. He'll lower his posture as though he was going for a body shot, but then he transitions into a head kick instead. He landed this multiple times on Browse specifically and you could probably expect to see him use this a lot more in the future. But this tactic highlights the importance of using different striking rhythms because different ranges draw out specific responses. When TJ goes for the body, his opponent typically tries to reply with counters in the boxing range, but he gets met with a head kick instead from a safer range. Again, this follows the same tactical concept as a switch cross head kick. You create the illusion that you're going to engage in the punching range and then change to the kicking range. And that's the top 5 tactics used by TJ Dillashaw and his footwork explained. If you're a martial artist wanting to know more about the details of a fighter's craft or just a casual fan wanting to have a better understanding of what's going on, I have you covered. And if you like this and you found this useful, hit that notification for more analysis of your favorite fighters. Feel free to suggest any fighters you'd like to see in the future in these breakdowns. Hopefully I earned your sub today and thanks for watching. Follow my WordPress page if you want to see any more analysis.